Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a tutorial here on, on the Moxa and what I've done so far and kind of how to log into it, um, how to use Node Red, some of the nodes that are associated uh, with the program that I wrote, uh, along with an explanation of the program that I wrote, um, and uh, some networking stuff and how to use Things Pro. Um, so Things Pro is the GUI that uh, is basically used to access the Moxa and configure network settings and you know all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, so anyway, the first step to to uh, logging into the Moxa is opening Putty. So we've got Putty here. You want to enter in the IP address of the LAN port that you're connected to. Uh, it's port 22. Uh, I think this is slightly irrelevant. It's just kind of the default that's built in there. Um, and you want to SSH, so uh, hit open. Uh, the screen will pop up. You want to log in as Moxa, and uh, the password is also Moxa. Um, and then this is what it looks like. You're logged in here. Uh, just a little side note if you hit LS, uh, it'll show all the files that are in the folder that you're in. Um, and uh, if you hit LS minus A, uh, it'll show you some hidden folders. So you see um, here we've got uh, the dot node red. That was hidden before up here <clears throat> uh, when I typed in ls. So you can see this is when I typed in ls, everything from above here. So uh, that file was hidden. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> if you want to get into that file, you use the command cd. Um, so let's see here. So cd dot node red. That's going to get you into that folder. You can hit ls again, and uh, you notice um, this flows uh, <clears throat> underscore moxa dot json. So this is uh, basically this is your flows file. So everything that all the all the programs that you write in node red um, are basically saved in a json file. So um, <clears throat> you can open this and you can edit it. Uh, and sometimes Node Red will crash depending on, uh, you know, if you say you use the wrong port in your program on something, <clears throat> or maybe you um, uh, use the wrong IP address on something, then Node Red oftentimes will crash. So, one of the ways to fix this um, so, Nano is an editor uh, built into the Linux environment. So, you can open, <clears throat> open it with Nano here. Uh, and uh, you just nano and then flows moxa.json, hit enter. Uh, so this is the file here. Now, one of the things here is uh, when, you, when you just type nano, you're not gonna be able to edit this file. Um, so uh, you're gonna wanna actually uh, type sudo nano flows underscore moxa.json. So sudo uh, just allows you to perform uh, root uh, privilege commands. So hit enter here. It's going to ask you for the password as Moxa. And then it'll ask you if you want to edit it or continue. You hit Y. Okay, so this is the file. So all the flows that you have, like this is Modbus Master. So this is one of the flows that's on here. You see right here, Modbus Master. Now this flow is disabled right now. Um, but uh, anyway, so. Uh, what you can do here is if it's crashing, sometimes an easy fix is to go and change this disabled uh, to true. So if this is false and there's incorrect details in there, like the port or the IPs or whatever you have, uh, whatever you have configured uh, and it's crashing. So you can basically uh, just, yeah, change this to true. Uh, and it'll disable it. Uh, and then if you kind of keep going, this is the other flow, read coils, and you want to change that uh, and make it disabled as well. So that's this flow, read coils. Um, and uh, if you had other flows open, they'd also appear here. And then if you were to keep going, uh, eventually you'll see things like, okay, here's this, here's an IP address for this, for one of the nodes, um, and it's set uh, to the correct IP right now. Um, there's also this port number here. You can actually edit these. Uh, sometimes if you try to disable it, it, it still won't work occasionally. I'm not exactly sure why, or maybe maybe I've I missed something and and because this JSON file is very long. Um, so it's possible that I I could have missed something in, in the past or whatever. 
But uh, so what you're gonna wanna do to once you edit this, you're gonna wanna hit Control X and uh, it's gonna ask you if you wanna save, you hit yes, enter, <clears throat> and that'll save it. Um, and then you notice there's some other files here like, like this and, uh, and this. Um, this is one that I just kind of made as a backup here. Um, this one here, I'm not, I think it's because I probably hit control O so you can actually delete that. It's, it's unnecessary, I believe, but maybe we'll leave it for now. If you did want to delete it, you would do RM, uh, flows underscore moxa dot JSON dot save and then hit enter and that will delete the file. Um, another, so important commands are, uh, basically, so you've got LS remove um, and then CD means change current directory. So uh, CD it will allow you to move into a directory or a, a folder. So uh, if you hit CD dot dot space dot dot and hit enter, you'll go back and you can always hit LS to see, okay, what's in the file uh, or what's, what's in that directory, that folder. Um, and then uh, let's see what else here. Uh, CD uh, and then a tilde will bring you to your main user directory, which is in this case Moxa Moxa. Um, and uh, so you can actually go back here even further though. Uh, and now this is the root directory, but you won't really be able to access anything here unless you change to root, uh, uh, user root. So you do that by hitting sudo su. Uh, and then now we're in the root. So now uh, you can see that it's changed here. So we're in root. Uh, and then if you wanna go back, you'd go sudo uh, su moxa. And now, uh, oh, mm, sudo su moxa, I thought that's what it was. Let's see here. Hmm. Nope. It says no password entry for user Moxa. Hmm. No password entry. Interesting. Okay, I'm not sure why that is. That's weird. Maybe. Oh, also just as just a side note here, if you CD, if you want to get back to that Moxa uh, directory, the Basically, you just cd home, and then you can see uh, it's cd moxa, uh, and then we're back. Oh, you know, it might be sudo su moxa no capital. Yeah, it is. Okay. So there's no capital there. So uh, sudo su moxa no capital. That'll get you back to the moxa directory. And then um, when you're in the root directory, you don't have to use the sudo command because uh, that's all you're doing when you use the sudo command is accessing root privileges. So you don't need to do that. Uh, you, when you're in root, you can just run things. The thing is, is when you're in root, uh, it can be like more uh, dangerous or detrimental to the system because you could delete files that are necessary uh, for the mocks to operate properly or uh, whatever. Um, so just a side note too is if you... Um, uh, if you were to, um, you know, mess anything up in here, um, in, in the Moxa, uh, basically you can do like a kind of a, uh, reset to default, uh, by pre holding, pressing and holding one of the buttons on the Moxa, uh, itself. And the instructions for that are in the hardware manual for the Moxa. Um, but it, it will, what it does is it erases the boot drive but it's not actually going to uh, reset to default. Um, in order to reset to default, we actually need a special cable ordered from Moxa. And uh, with that cable, uh, you can access this serial console port. Um, and uh, from there, you would need to install firmware. So if you reinstall the firmware or like do follow the process for updating the firmware, which is also in the uh, Mox uh, user, I'm not sure if it's in the user manual or the hard drive, hardware manual. I believe that's in the uh, user manual, but uh, it might, there actually might be a section in both of them 
But uh, anyway, it's it's pretty straightforward. You just follow the instructions, and then that will bring you back to like a complete factory default, basically. So uh, okay, so next I'm gonna show you uh, things pro gateway. So um, I've, I've, I'm gonna include instructions on how to uh, install uh, things pro and Node Red as well. Um, <clears throat> I have written them somewhere here. Um, yeah, it's in here. And uh, you want to open this with Notepad++. Oh no, actually, um, where is it here? This is actually the script. So I actually made a script file uh, that has a, a .sh extension that can be ran. Yeah, so that can be ran in a Linux environment, but um, yeah, it's somewhere around here. Might be in here. Anyway, um, we can find that later and I can show you guys or whoever's watching here. But um, regardless, I, I will include it uh, with with everything so, so that it... Uh, oh, actually, I want that. Let's leave this. Here it is. So, yeah, this is it. So, um, there's some instructions in there. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll make sure that that's clear uh, when I'm all done here. So, um, But uh, it's pretty easy. There's a program uh, that you will need to install Things Pro um, if you don't have an SD card, which is the easiest way to do it in my opinion. Um, uh, like without, a, without the SD card, I think, is the easiest way to do it. Uh, it's called, actually, it's called Win uh, SCP. And this is kind of works similar to uh, putty. Uh, so you would you basically you'd put in the um, you would put in the IP um, the password and uh, yeah this is secure file transfer protocol. That's what that SFTP is. Um, and then, uh, sure. So, and then you can log in here. And uh, I guess it's going to ask me for the password again. Anyway, so now you can see uh, this is the files on the Windows computer that I'm using. These are the files that are actually on the mox itself. So when we're navigating around through here, looking at the directories and stuff, that's that's the same stuff that you're seeing here. Uh, you're just seeing it in a more user-friendly format. So see, this is our root directory, home, moxa. So you can uh, transfer files by dragging and dropping here. Now I'm not going to do it, but um, that's that's. See, this is I dragged and dropped this in here. This is the Things Pro installation. Uh, so it was going to download it there, but uh, that's the Things Pro installation. So basically, uh, I'll include the instructions on how to do that. But you'll just want to transfer it using this Win SCP. Um, and uh, just another note, uh, you want to install Things Pro 2 before you install Node Red. Uh, there's some conflicting uh, dependencies associated with the two softwares. So uh, that's just something to note. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. So like I said, drag and drop the uh, downloaded file from Mox's website uh, for Things Pro. And uh, you should be good to go. Uh, and you know, if there's anything else, like, like for instance, you know, if you wrote a script or a program you wanted to run on the Moxa, same thing, you just drag it and you drop it. <clears throat> but, uh, you can also, you know, create stuff, uh, on the Moxa. Like if you wanted to run a script, you could create it here using nano. So, you know, if you wanted to make a script, we'll call it uh, script dot pi. That's for Python, Python, uh, extension. Then you could open it. And uh, you could, uh, you know, write your code and then control X and that's going to save it. Um, but uh, also, uh, it doesn't show the command here, but control Z will just exit it. And then if you look, it didn't save anything. <clears throat> but if we were to do that again and, uh, you know, uh, 
write something in here or not, hit control X, you look, um, this, this is it. Oh, I'm not sure why it gave that dot save, but, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Let's see here. Now you can see it here, that script. Oh yeah, that wasn't it, sorry. That's something else. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> yeah, that's script.py right there. Now if we wanna remove that, we remove script.py. That's gone now. Okay, um, so uh, there's also, um, well, I, I've included this in, in the documentation that's in here, but uh, um, you will want to, uh, it will be a tar file. This Things Pro is a tar file. Um, so see, it's le it's going down onto the second line here. Uh, it's a .tgz, um, at which is a tar file. Uh, and I believe uh, the command I've put in here, it's uh, tar minus xvf, I believe, if I remember correctly, which will unpack. So it's, it's basically, it's a compressed file. So that will unpack the file and uh, you will be able to then install it. Um, doo -doo -doo, let's see here. Well, I'm not sure where it is at the moment, but um, I will figure that out and I will include that. Um, but uh, anyway, I actually, I believe you can actually do it from this win SCP as well. If you right click and uh, see, oh no. Let's see what the extension is on that. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, so you can actually extract it here somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, right here. <clears throat> so this will untar it right there. So that will unpack that file. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty easy way to do it. You can also pack a file uh, and like um, and zip it up with, with this tar command as well. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Um, so to Things Pro. So this is Things Pro. Um, let's, uh, let's close that and let's reopen it back up. So, should ask us to log in here. So yeah, so get started. Um, so <clears throat> we've got two users. We've got admin and Moxa. Uh, the details on the diff uh, the difference between these are are located in um, the Things Pro Two software documentation. Um, so the password is the username one two three four. So if you're logging into root at moxa.com. Uh, then it's root one two three four. Uh, if you're logging into admin at moxa.com, it's admin one two three four is the password. This is stuff I'll also include in the documentation. Um, now the difference between the two is located, like I said, in the Things Pro Two software user manual. Um, now I mean I think you can pretty much just do everything from root. Admin may have uh, some some different uh, things you can do like uh, in regards to scheduling and stuff, but I'm pretty sure root can do everything. So that's what I've been uh, what I've been using. Um, and w like it's it's not really relevant to us at the moment because um, the uh, like things pro has Modbus data acquisition and uh, stuff that you can that you can do, but it, it just doesn't seem to be as efficient uh, as node red. Now, um, you know, that being said, I did try to contact Moxa support uh, about that, but <clears throat> they never got back to me. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why they never responded to my email. They, they did get back to me previously. I spoke to them quite a bit, um, but uh, yeah. Um, and then it's just kind of been a bit crazy here with everything going on with this COVID-19 crisis. But anyway, so this is kind of uh, the main page here. You've got your CPU, um, uh, usage here, you got your memory usage and you got your storage. 
system storage. Now, <clears throat> I've been messing around with this Moxa for quite a while, so uh, I think the system storage is, is relatively full. Uh, it's probably because I've had to do a couple factory resets. Well, sorry, not factory resets. That uh, kind of uh, default, factory default, which I said er erases the, the boot drive, but it leaves all this other stuff on there. So um, I think like I had to uh, uninstall and reinstall Node Red and Things Pro like a few times before I figured out how to how to do it because of like I said those conflicting dependencies within the software. Um, so uh, I think it's kind of it's it's loaded up maybe with with some extraneous stuff. But the problem is is, is finding it. Like when you install something, I mean you got to go into the terminal here and you gotta uh, you know you gotta somehow know uh, exactly what it installed and I mean it, it it seems to be a lot there's a in a Linux environment there's just there's so many files like if you were to navigate I mean I, I won't even get into it but if you were to navigate to the root directory <clears throat> and start digging around in those files it, it just it's pretty much goes on endlessly um, because it's just you're looking at every little tiny component of an installation and and uh, there's a lot so um, uh, just another thing to note too is that I have connected the Moxa to the internet, um, but I've done it using I've bridged the internet connection from uh, Raspberry Pi's wireless internet connection out the Ethernet into the Moxa, um, and uh, uh, so if we were to uh, ping Google here, which is eight 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 eight, you'll see we're getting a response. So we have internet uh, right now. Um, now in the future. Uh, so you could you could get internet directly into the uh, uh, Ethernet port on the Moxa, and uh, what you want to do is because it's not going to come configured, it's going to come configured with um, uh, kind of default IP addresses, and they're both going to be static. So what you're going to want to do um, is install Things Pro. This is the easiest way to do it. This is not how I did it originally. I I did everything from the command line here because, uh, not from this one, from, from this command line here, because I was unable uh, to install Things Pro because I had Node Red installed first and I didn't I didn't know why this was happening. It, it took a while to figure it out, uh, but I actually got that answer from Moxa Tech Support. They actually knew. Um, so, but uh, okay, so uh, I wouldn't, so you install Things Pro because you don't require internet for that, right? You can just drag and drop that file like I showed. So you go into here, you go to gateway, you go to network, um, and uh, it's a little bit slow sometimes. So it gives us this network overview here. Um, this is gonna show, like if you have a SIM card installed, I think it's gonna show your signal strength and all this stuff here. That's not something that I've done uh, yet. I uh, just didn't get around to it because busy working on other stuff with this thing. Um, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to configure. Uh, it's all kind of in here. You can do it from Things Pro. Um, and uh, there is uh, relatively detailed information in the Things Pro 2 user manual. So anyway, so this is our Ethernet port zero. This is what uh, I, I configured as DHCP here. This is the IP, you've got this information. If you actually go to the LAN here, uh, so you can set uh, oh, uh, no. If you go to Ethernet and then you go here, so you see it's on a wide area network right now. That's uh, the DHCP kind of server that we're connected to um, through the Raspberry Pi. Now you can you can go to <clears throat> settings here, and you can change this to static, uh, and then you can change it or or not. Um, and uh, go back to the status. It's the same. So this is Ethernet 1. Now it came default as like 192.168.4.125.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
so there's no Wi-Fi module in this Moxa. You can get one, but I believe, from my understanding, you can only either have a cell module or a Wi-Fi module. Um, but again, you can plug directly into the Ethernet port um, and give it internet as long as you're on. You've got this set to DHCP. Um, so yeah, I think uh, like Riley has kind of worked with me through a lot of this stuff. So. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking to you right now, Riley, or not, but um, uh, I mean, I think you're pretty familiar with Things Pro. You are the first person to get this installed on here. So um, there's also all this other stuff, like this Modbus data acquisition. So um, like you, you go in here and you create a tag um, or a template, sorry. This is your first step. I think I've created one uh, right here, Skata Pack, this one. Um, so you can create a template, uh, you know, you give it a name and then you add uh, t tags to it. So you give it a tag name, uh, you know, do you want to read coils, write coils, read registers, whatever. Uh, this is the address of um, the, let's see here, what did I put? Uh, yeah, the address, okay, that's like the address, the register address. And actually, uh, just a side note here is if you put 104 in, it's actually going to read uh, 103 or write to 103 in the SCADA pack 334. It seems to be indexed at 1 instead of indexed at 0, uh, as far as I can tell. So yeah, so you'd set this, the data type, Boolean, quantity, and the unit number I think is actually kind of extraneous and irrelevant because... Uh, I think it actually just overwrites it, and I, I don't think that really matters. But if you did want to put a unit number in there, you could. So uh, you'd add these tags uh, to your template. The template is for like our, you know, our device, or and you can reuse it over and over and and add all these tags. You got to do them all separately though. Um, and then you can go to Modbus Management here, and uh, basically uh, this is where. Uh, you would, oh, actually we're in Modbus TCP. So, so basically here I created a template. This is the IP address uh, and the port of the SCADA pack. Um, and uh, I'm not connected to the SCADA pack right now, but uh, you'd go in here, create an interface name. You'd enter in the IP address of the SCADA pack, the port, um, this delay. I think I set it at like 500 milliseconds, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, what that should be um that's for somebody with more comprehensive not mod bus knowledge um and then uh the interval and stuff like that response timeout again same thing um not super familiar with mod bus so but uh anyway i i did get this connect to connect if you do show connected devices uh it'll tell you if this is green a green check mark it tells you that you it's able to send and receive data to the SCADA pack. Now, I don't have the SCADA pack plugged in right now because uh, I don't have an Ethernet switch. And uh, so I can't actually network all this stuff together. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, whoever's working on this, you, you can easily follow along. It, I, don't, I don't think it makes any difference. So again, uh, it's not connected. So you've got this um, as this little red icon. Uh, again, green check mark if it's connected. Um, now, just something to note is that when I tried to write, set a write tag to write to a coil, I would never, uh, I would never get a uh, a green icon here. Now, I don't know if that's just because it's writing and not requesting or reading. I'm not sure, but uh, it didn't really seem to work. There's this built-in. Um, uh, Basically, there's this built-in like Python and C++ API in the Moxa, um, or as part of Moxa and Things Pro, whatever. And uh, so, essentially, uh, you can open these um, Python uh, uh, or create a Python script, and it's supposed to be able to read and write um, to your Modbus device uh, using like a Python program. Now, uh, Riley sat with me too while I kind of went through this 
And it just, it wasn't working. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's the device we have connected or, uh, you know, maybe if it's just meant to only be used with MQTT. I played around with it for a bit. I didn't get too hung up on it because I, I everything, you know, can just be done from Node Red. I think it's quite a bit easier to do it that way. Um, and, and it kind of just keeps everything streamlined into, into one software. Um, but, you know, just, it's, I think, you know, it's good to know that, you know, uh, Things Pro is designed for Modbus data acquisition, but it's Modbus data acquisition. So Things Pro itself, you, sh you can create these write tags, but you can't actually write to the device with Things Pro. So I'm not really sure what the whole point of the write tag is. I kind of think, uh, I think maybe it has to do something, uh, has to do with the like Python API because it appears that you can write uh, to a Modbus device using a Python program. Uh, and the API, I guess, is just some built-in like kind of Modbus libraries and Python and C++. And, uh, but you know, that really complicates things because you're basically, you know, this is for like more of like a developer who, you know, has some, you know, serious software knowledge, maybe a software engineer, somebody who is creating software from the ground up uh, and uh, to do basically what we've done in Node Red. I mean, he would obviously have more control over things and be able to streamline things. And, you know, with a lot of uh, computer science knowledge, you'd be able to create a program that uh, you know, is very efficient and maybe utilizes less of the CPU power rather than Node Red. That's quite possible because uh, when you have that kind of control uh, over something, you in, in computer science, you can uh, you can manage the memory and stuff like that. Uh, like C plus plus is great for memory management, but it's also the hardest programming language to program in. So um, you know, that's not something I think is really relevant to us. Um, so, I mean, that's what I think the write tags are for. Uh, I do know that um, this is compatible with MQTT. Uh, and I actually tested this and it, it worked. It was able to read, uh, uh, it was able to read the values in the SCADA pack with MQTT. Um, and uh, what you would do actually, so uh, you can also create a Modbus slave here uh, so basically you can continuously pull information from a uh, um, SCADA pack or whatever any Modbus device you can continuously pull stuff like on an interval again everything that I'm talking about the Python API all these things they are located in um, the either the things pro 2 manual so the things pro 2 manual has uh, you know uh, it mentions the Python API, but it doesn't really get into it. It's actually, I think, mostly uh, in a what, what they call a tech note on Mox's website. They call it a tech note. If you go to like Things Pro 2, you search Things Pro 2 on the Moxa website uh, under resources and software and documentation. Uh, you will, there's a white paper somewhere in there about uh, like developing user applications or developing software and stuff for the Moxa and I believe it's in there. Um, but I can, I can attach that stuff uh, afterwards here. But I, again, I think, you know, that's a little bit uh, probably over all of our heads. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but it's just, I, it's just unnecessary, I think, for what we're trying to do. I mean, at this point in time, we're trying to read and write single coils basically and you know we don't need some crazy fancy uh software program that we wrote ourselves to do that when we already have node red and things pro and stuff so um i would say mostly what we're going to use things pro for is uh just you know configuring the network configuring the cell modem uh you know maybe you want to do some port forwarding stuff you know i set this up here before because i was testing things out but uh you know you can add some port forwarding stuff uh the internal port is is not the inter I, I believe is not the port of the moxa uh it's it's the port that's internal to the network that you're trying to connect to so if you're trying to connect to a device um what is its internal port uh, so, you know, what is, what is the port number on this side of the device, not on the other side of the network? Um, and, uh, so you could do that. Um, 
But uh, and this is like again, this is to develop programs and stuff. You can upload programs that you've written, um, and you know again, we don't really need that. So um, these are some other applications that are installed here, um, and uh, you know I think quite a few of these require like a subscription. Like this is Amazon Web Services IoT. Um, and again, like it, it, I think it's all about data acquisition here. It's about just retrieving data from the end devices, not really performing logic on them or writing to them or anything or controlling them in any way. I think it's, it's all, you know, everything you do in Things Pro, you're pretty much, as far as I understand, you're just acquiring data. So you're reading, basically. You're just acquiring data and logging it somewhere for, you know, maybe to send to SCADA, which then maybe controls. Uh, because, see, one of the things you can do is you can log this data using Things Pro and read all the data. And then you can, you can set when you want to send that to Signet, uh, to, your, um, to your SCADA system. Like, so... Uh, you know, instead of SCADA having to use a bunch of uh, power or whatever memory or whatever to be continuously polling all the time, uh, you could essentially, uh, you know, log all the information here and then, you know, you could even write a program, upload it here, and then have that program decide what data is relevant and all this stuff and then send it back to Signet, which will save you bandwidth and all this other stuff. Um, so again, I don't know if that's really re overly relevant, but I'm just going to explain kind of the software as much as I can here. So if you were to use, um, uh, MQTT, uh, one of the things you can do is you can create all those tags and then you can go to this generic MQTT client and you put the host, um, uh, the reason it's 10, 10, 10, 1 is because I set up a basically an MQTT server in Node-RED. Uh, and that MQTT server, uh, you know, is, is internal to Node-RED, which is, again, which is 10, 10, 10, 1, which is the IP address of the Moxa LAN port that we're connected to, um, which is the same as this. But it was a different port. So this was the port. Um, and, and this worked. I, I did set this up. Uh, and you you select the tags. These are tags that I created uh, and uh, to test. And uh, there's, I don't know what was going on with the write tags. I just I I don't think you can write to it with MQTT. I don't think I really don't understand what the write tags are for, or if maybe they're only compatible with Moxa Modbus devices. But every time I like I messed around with this quite a bit, and and uh, it. it from my understanding, you can't write to it. And it, it, it even says, like, if you read through the Things Pro 2 documentation or, or ma user manual or whatever, it's like it's for data acquisition. So I, I don't really understand what the write tags are for, to be honest. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that is to be used with software that you've written. But uh, anyway... If you were to do this uh, and set up, this is this is the uh, what this actually is. This is the broker. So this is the MQTT broker. So this is actually a local broker that's running here uh, on Node Red. Um, and when you enable it, it it will uh, actually um, uh, show it's connected. A little green check mark or whatever. And uh, I can actually show you that later. But, uh, and then I think this is, again, this is this tag uploader. This, I think you upload it to like a server. Yeah. So if you had a server somewhere, I messed around with this a whole bunch as you can see, uh, but I, I didn't really get it figured out at all because we don't have a server that we're uploading data to. That's kind of like a HTTP, uh, like publish and subscribe type thing uh, instead of MQTT. Um, so, but you, you can do that again, unnecessary, I believe. And uh, uh, this token here, uh, so what this does is if you click on it, um, and uh, uh, essentially, if you wanna add a token, so you'd add, you know, a read or read write or whatever. So what this does is it generates a, uh, it generates this. Now you have to copy this by hitting that copy to the clipboard um, 
So what that does is it creates a token that is used for that Python and C++ API that I was talking about earlier that allows you to develop your own programs. Again, not going to do that. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, if you follow the instructions in ThingsPro2, if you wanted to do that, yeah, you'd create a token, you'd save it. There's a file in the Moxa here somewhere. You have to locate the file and then you copy it or you paste that uh, token into the file. And essentially it just, it gives you, it's basically like a uh, authentication for the program to give it privilege to like access the, the things pro to Moxa API uh, that enables you to uh, theoretically write and read with a Python program or a C++ program to a Modbus device. Um, and, and somewhere in here, uh, there's actually examples, um, and I forget exactly where they are, uh, but uh, I actually moved, I uh, copied them into this directory here, uh, into this uh, sample uh, directory. So, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it, it, it tells you in, in the documentation, the Moxa documentation, where that is, but it, it they have these sample uh programs here python programs so if you open this um this is like okay this says i guess uh you've got a tag here this is the tag i named it this is skater pack uh that's the template i believe this is the or no that's not the template it's the device name is what it is the device name this is the actual tag name uh and so this says it basically uh this one i think just prints the value um and then if we go back here uh there's a publish and subscribe now again this is utilizing mqtt so uh but you can write a python program that uh publishes the tag value uh, to an MQTT broker. Uh, and this is the subscribe. Uh, here, you're, it's the same thing. So you're subscribing to uh, an uh, MQTT tag uh, that's you know been uploaded to a broker, published to a broker. So um, yeah, uh, unnecessary. So. That's pretty much things pro. Um, you know, there's, this is, I think this is where the scheduling comes in, uh, I believe. Uh, but it is, um, or actually maybe that's not, but uh, yeah, no. So this is where I think uh, you would enter in a server or no, no, no. Okay, this is just settings actually. So sorry, forget that. But basically uh, you can, uh, configure this however you want and then I believe uh, like upload tag values um, but uh, you can also schedule maintenance in here you can reboot uh, this is your system log uh, which you can also find navigating through the terminal here um, and you can upgrade you can actually upgrade software you can drag and drop software from the Moxa website that you downloaded and you can drop it into here but you can't change the firmware through here uh you cannot update the firmware only like uh, i think like if things pro comes out with a new version you could uh put that in here so again no firmware can be done from here it all has to be done through that serial console port that requires a special cable um and uh it uh you're gonna have to go into that console port uh because i think the reason is is once you start messing with the firmware the reason you have to go into that special port is because it kind of reconfigures during that firmware update it's going to reconfigure your ethernet ports and your uh you know it's going to shut down all those comms and stuff except for that special port basically and it requires a special cable so uh we don't have a gps module installed i don't believe but uh that's another thing that can be can be said it keeps it things keeps asking us to change the password uh, yeah, please change your default password. So you can do that if you wanted to. Um, on this side, you've got some kind of little easy to use um, 
switches here, I guess, for the network. Uh, and these are kind of the same things that are in here in the system setting. Some of them, anyway. Um, and uh, you don't want your language to be Chinese, I don't think. So that's pretty much it. You can, you can change and add user profiles here as well. Again, everything that you can do in Things Pro, you can do in here. But you have to know all the commands and everything. Um, and I got pretty familiar with that stuff. But again, it's unnecessary because just, just install Things Pro right off the bat. Easiest thing to do. I will include that documentation. It's very simple, actually, once you know how to do it. You transfer the files, you unzip them, you install them. It shouldn't take overly long. So uh, this is node red here. Um, so we'll get, we're gonna get into this. Uh, I'll make another video. Uh, I think I've given a decent introduction to the Moxa and Things Pro. Um, should, I think, you know, anybody that's to use this should be able to, to navigate their way using my video that I've made here. And, uh, you know, if you go to the Moxa website, uh, and you go to support, and you go to software and documentation, and you go to Things Pro 2. You can also search up the device, which is the UC8100, and, and not 8100A, not 8100, but 8100MET. I'll show you this first. Uh, if you go to this, so this is our device. Um, so this is where you download the firmware. <coughs> Uh, and we already have firmware version three. That can be checked typing in a command, uh, which I have written in here. It will be included. If you just read through this, uh, there's a way to check your firmware. Um, there's also a way to check your drive space and all this stuff. So uh, yeah, see this is, uh, this is, if you type in K version, that's gonna show you your firmware. So we've got version 3.0. So we're fully up to date. Uh, so no need to, to do that right now unless you want to factory reset this thing. Uh, the tool chain, um, I, I believe that that's, that's for, again, uh, for programming, I believe, um, and writing software. Uh, it's not something that we require, I don't think. Uh, some drivers, that's drivers, that's for, I believe, for like the USB ports and things like that, I believe. Um, but I don't think we need that. Uh, oh, also just a side note too. Um, sorry to get off uh, topic. I'm kind of all over here, but, uh, where our system storage is, you can expand this, uh, by adding an SD card. Um, so again, that's going to be in the documentation. So, um, which I'll show you in a second here. Uh, this is. Uh, forget what the software package is exactly. Um, utility library. What is, oh, I think uh, this is, oh, the software, that might actually be That might actually be uh, the, yeah, this was released, released previously. That could be, um, you know what? I actually don't know what that is. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, software package. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I didn't use any of that stuff. So uh, I, I did, I did, I do believe I did download it. Um, and uh, and stuff. I think I downloaded all that stuff and kind of messed around with it a little bit. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty pretty irrelevant to what we're doing. So um, you can always ask Moxa. They're pretty easy to contact. You can go on the website and, and contact them, and they'll email you back if you just uh, you kind of fill out a a little. Um, Thing on the website and uh, submit it to them and explain the problem and then they'll contact you by email. Um, but anyway, this is this is down here in the support documents. This is where all of uh, you know the manual. So we're using Debian nine. 
um, on this Moxa, but we have another Moxa and it's using Debian 8. And Debian 8, I was not able to install Node-RED on Debian 8. So that might be something that will need to be updated, which can probably be done maybe through firmware or something of the like. Um, uh, or that might even be what the software is here. Uh, this might be the Linux software itself. Uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure. But it this says operating system Linux, so the, you would assume that you already have Linux on it. But um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure about that. That's again something that could be brought to Moxa if you wanted to update. I'm sure you can do that. Update the operating system. That should be super simple. Maybe not super simple, but you should be able to do that no problem. Because I mean, the Moxa is practically so Debian nine is the same operating system I have running on my Raspberry Pi. Basically, it's pretty much identical. Uh, the the Mox is just an industrial version of it, uh, and obviously you can update an operating system, right? I mean, that's not. Uh, I don't think that's rocket science. Um, so anyway, Debian nine. This is the manual for Debian nine. That's what you need. Again, you can actually check uh, the version. Uh, and uh, that's that's the things pro version, uh, I believe. Firmware things pro. There is a command. I did write it somewhere. I thought anyway. Oh look, that's what we were looking for before. That's how you unpack that file. But uh, hmm, should be in here somewhere. I'll figure it out. I'll find it all. I'll make sure it's all clear in this document um, and uh, shouldn't be a problem for anybody but uh, if any new moxes are bought they should have Debian 9 it's if it's an older one it might have 8 but uh, yeah I think yeah I think P version if you type that command in I believe that's a things pro version yeah so that's the things pro version that's what we're using it's 2.5.1 Anyway, there's a command, you enter it, and that's going to give you the version of the operating system that you were using. Uh, I kind of wish I could, I knew where it was, because now I'm thinking, you know, did I not write everything down? But I'm pretty darn sure that I did, because I was pretty thorough when I was working through stuff. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's up here. Debian 8, see, yeah. I noted this hmm. anyway all right well we'll figure it out um uh, the other thing i was just going to show is uh we go back here um and uh things pro 2 This is the software, yeah, so, okay. So, this one here is not what we want because this is 8100A, ours is 8100, same with this one. Um, this is the installation file for Things Pro 2 for Debian 9, which is what we have here. We do not have Debian 8, we have Debian 9. Um, this one, this is just an older version. And this is just an older version. This is an older version for Debian 9, older version for Debian 8. But we want 2.5.1. So uh, you just download this and then transfer it and then follow the install instructions that I'm going to include. So, uh, and then there's this uh, supported documentation. So there's a data sheet, there's a manual, uh, there's a tech note. These tech notes are kind of what I would, they're like a white paper. They explain how to do things. Um, and uh, how to use it with MQTT, VPN. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you can actually move applications that you've written uh, it to the computer. Um, and uh, no, these are all the tech notes. Uh, the log upload function tells you how to do that. That's that uh, uses that, I think, like HTML um, kind of publish and subscribe method. Um, and uh, anyway, gives you some of that, some information there. There is some other stuff though that I found that I will also include uh, that I've bookmarked. 
um, that gives some more in-depth information on the that API, Python and C++ API I was talking about. But anyway, uh, I think that gives a pretty good overview of this. Um, I know Riley knows, is pretty familiar with this, so um, yeah. I'll move on in the next video. I'll talk about Node-RED. I'll talk about the program uh, that I kind of made to test everything out or the few kind of programs that I made to test everything out. I'll run through all the different uh, nodes and uh, how to download and install new ones um, and uh, how to write some functions and do some things like that. So uh, anyway, thank you for listening and uh, I'll see you in the next video.